a handheld form factor for Windows 12, Redfall gets slashed to 30 frames per second, and I got a big shout out to an anonymous benefactor. Happy Friday, friends! It is Friday! It is... Everybody loves a Friday! It's spring, at least here in the northern hemisphere. Temperatures are getting warm, the grass is turning green, and we are podcasting because it's a Friday and that's what we do. Hopefully you had a wonderful week, a lot to talk about, a lot on the gaming side, a lot on the Windows side, which makes it a perfect week. So let's kick it off. But first, a uh, big shout out to an anonymous benefactor who sent me this Halo Infinite hooded sweatshirt. And uh, yeah, I got the whole hood, got the whole thing. It's kind of hard to see because of the lighting in the studio, but it's Halo Infinite. There's a imagery on the back, and I don't know who sent it to me, but uh, thanks for sending that on over this way. We'll wear it for the podcast today. So let's kick it off with the tech news. Here we go. So Microsoft starts testing uh, sensing privacy settings in Windows 11. So this is rolling out, I believe, in the beta channel. It's 22624. And if you have present sensors, it can now manage and block things from using these sensors. It's just a little bit more privacy for your device, which is a great thing. This impacts more of the physical world like being in front of devices and things like that. Although uh, I would still love like a lockdown mode on the software side that says don't send any telemetry to anything or anywhere uh, and give me more data. I mean, that's really just a firewall and I guess I could configure it myself. But having that avail available in app would, or in the OS would be great too. So anyways, be on the lookout for that. That's rolling out to beta. Eventually we'll probably, maybe that's a 22H3 or 23H2 feature if I could uh, get my years and halves correctly. Um, HoloLens 2 is also getting Windows 11. This one's a little bit surprising, mostly because it's like, why now? I, I mean, Microsoft made some significant cuts in their mixed reality division, and a lot of that impacted Halo, but either way, Halo. <laughs> HoloLens. Not Halo Lens, Hollow Lens uh, division got took some pretty big cuts, and so either way, it's getting Windows 11. But I guess better late than never. We the interesting thing will be to see like what is actually changing, if anything, or if they're truly just basically doing the minimum and just making it run Windows 11, if you will, but really not adding anything, adding anything new. Now, the big news out of the Windows world this week was this handheld presentation. Now, if you're on the audio, do apologize. I'm going to play video. There's no audio. I muted the audio, but it gives you a little bit of visual presentation about what's going on here. So this video made a massive splash across the Windows and, honestly, gaming community because there was this Windows handheld mode that showed up. Now, there's some big disappointments because what you're looking at here, friends, is never going to be made. Uh, unless this little hype wave actually got it in front of the right people inside of Microsoft and they're actually going to build it. But considering the quote from the actual creator, it's never going to be built. Now, what this was, let's take a step back. This was a hackathon project. So Microsoft hosts hackathon where people can come up and conceptualize ideas and, and spend some cycles trying to build things um, that could potentially be valuable for users or the company as a whole. And one of them was getting a a shell experience, which is what Microsoft calls their interfaces on Windows, on the Steam Deck, not Stream Deck, Steam Deck, and making it good for handheld devices. That was that was kind of the idea. And so this kind of blew up. One, because at the end of this video, that does show off some imagery that looks like Windows 12, if I'm honest, because it, it has the floating taskbar. It has the system tray at the top of the display. And we've seen that from the leaked videos or leaked image that came out of Microsoft Ignite late in 2022. So it aligns to that, which honestly gives further weight to the fact that Microsoft might actually be trying to do this, like actually making the Macify of the OS. Now, the reason why this is never going to come to market is actually the creator of this because this video leaked via walking cat. Uh, on Reddit, he said, I started this hackathon project and it didn't go much of anywhere. But, and then he's referring to the article writing up, making it seem like this is in development. He said, we just didn't have the right engineers to do a lot of what we wanted to do in the short hackathon project timeframe. Maybe this odd article referring to where this information came from. Can we pitch this to Microsoft again? Phil Spencer was very nice and tried to drive me to the people that could help me, but everyone was tied up at the time. So it's not looking like that this is going to be a thing that is going to be coming to market anytime soon. It was a conceptual idea of how to make the Steam Deck, which does not work exceptionally well, 
with Windows 11, just make it more usable. And so that's kind of the idea. And unfortunately, I think a lot of people saw Windows handheld and then they extrapolated that out into Microsoft's gonna build their own thing and then they're gonna have their own Xbox thing and like it just kind of got out of control and so it sounds like, yeah, that's the end of it. So either way, that is that uh, Build Sessions, Build, which is Microsoft's developer conference, are now online. And it's really, there's not a lot there for Windows fans. There are some things, but I'm not expecting much. Some people were saying, are they going to announce Windows 12? And no, they, they will not. Actually, it seems like it's too early. And really, we don't know when they are going to announce it. If we go by the Windows 11 life cycle, it would be announced in about June time frame, roughly speaking, and then ship in October, which means we are about a year away if Microsoft sticks to their traditional patterns or their most recent pattern of how they announced a product. Um, if they go back to their more traditional ways, then maybe we might see it later this year get announced and then a year in beta. But Microsoft doesn't seem to be doing much of that uh, long gestational periods for their products anymore. Now, on to the gaming news, because the gaming side was not without its own drama as well this week, my friends. So the big news, actually, there's a couple of big news out of the, uh, the gaming side, is that 30 frames per second for Redfall, and wow, this this is bad. Uh, this is bad news, and, and more frustrating news than anything else, because if you go back and look at all the marketing material for the C, and this is on the Series X, by the way, Microsoft said it's the most powerful gaming console ever. It's the most powerful thing ever. And so Microsoft's own development shops aren't able to make it run a game at 60 frames per second. Now, I know that there are challenges in making games run 60 frames per second on these hardware boxes that are limited. And let's be honest, they're not running the latest and greatest hardware. They're now several years old at this point from when they launch, and that, which also means that the hardware is even a little bit older than that because you can't launch and, and, and with you know, game-changing hardware because it's got to go through the building period. Either way, it doesn't matter. 30 frames per second Redfall, the question becomes, should they have delayed it or not? And, well, the thing is, is we, they've already promised that a patch will be coming that will deliver 60 frames per second. And if somebody, please correct me if I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure that they did show off Redfall at 60 frames per second. But this is a very hard decision for the developers behind this because it's not like they woke up and said, you know what, nah, we're just not going to do 60 frames per second. It was, it was, do we delay the game or do we delay 60 frames per second? And very clearly the choice they made was we will delay 60 frames per second. We can get the game out in its, in our current, you know, orientation or configuration and then we will update it later with that stuff that's it's just a choice and i think microsoft said that's the better choice because delaying games will be just another black eye for us because they've already delayed so many games right starfield effectively got delayed forza effectively got delayed and they don't want to punt this thing to a second half of the year and have nothing in the first half and so Yep, it's just disappointing. That's the only way to describe it. I hope the gameplay is great. I probably, I, Redfall is not my type of game. It's, I'm not into that genre. And so I wasn't planning to play it anyways, but I still, well, I still might just because if it's on Game Pass, I don't have to pay for it. But either way, 30 frames per second. Anyways, uh, Ubisoft Plus is coming to the Xbox. Finally, this has been rumored and leaked and showed up everywhere for a long time. And it'll bring over 60 Ubisoft games and all of their DLCs for $18 a month. Oof. Yeah, that's rough. That's that's tough. 18 bucks a month. Especially when you look at the, the price. This is, this is the thing. When you look at the price of Game Pass, and it has so much more content and better content, granted 30 frames per second Redfall, but it's still there, for less money makes this tough. And this is sort of Microsoft's argument for why they are going to be trying to get, and I still do believe they will close the Activision deal, because it's less money. It's a better value. Microsoft is going to be the people that are out front. And they can do this because they're such a massive company. And they have cash flows elsewhere inside the company. So 18 bucks a month. It is available. I suspect that anybody who's considering this might just subscribe for like three months or something like that. Get your fix of, of whatever title it is you're looking to specifically play. And then kind of jump in and out. But that is the benefit of these services is that you can easily move in and out. There's also a new Xbox update coming this, or the April update has been announced and it's going to be coming very soon. Revamp search experience so it's easier to find the content with inside the Xbox world. And also a new hours to configure the power savings modes, which Microsoft made a big deal about making a carbon, a more carbon friendly console. Now you can figure the hours of when things will turn on and off based on that. Also the Xbox design lab unveiled a whole bunch of new colors. So if you want to update your design lab controllers, you can go ahead and do that. And finally, PC Game Pass officially launches in 40 new countries this week because that's the Xbox news. That's a lot. Like, controllers, updates, Ubisoft, 
PC Game Pass. That's a lot of content and a lot of information from Xbox uh, kicking off this or this week in itself. So let's just dive on into the questions, and we're gonna. It's a little, <laughs> it's a little different this time because uh, Bart, I believe his name is Bartok. I won't read all of these, uh, but he said, you know what? I'm going to use AI to ask you questions this week. And so here they go. Uh, he asked them on Twitter. He said, what are the, some, some of the most exciting trends in development and tech industry that you are following right now? I think AI. AI is the easy one. I'm very much invested in the ChatGPT mid-journey segment. I follow it incredibly closely. Uh, there's a new baby GPT, I think it's called, coming out that's pretty interesting as well. And so, yeah. Uh, one of the more interesting questions, and get mind you, this comes from AI. It says, how do you balance your roles as a journalist and a software executive? Do you face challenges or conflicts of interest? That is a fantastic question, Mr. Bing AI or Mr. Chat GPT. So there's sort of like two sides to my life, right? So for people who aren't aware, prior to my software development role that I'm in now, I was pretty much a full-time journalist on writing and doing videos and all that. Now, my career is very much leading a software company that, uh, a software division, I should say, that builds applications that customize and and make, uh, what do we say? We say makes Windows more personal and more productive. We would have productivity apps for Windows and personalization apps. And so how do I balance the journalistic side and the software side? There's not really too much of conflicts of interest. I mean, we build things that make Windows better. And so I'm not really involved with the gaming side of Stardock, although Stardock does make some great games. I am I'm pretty removed from that by design just because I'm on the software side. And so I, the balancing of it is interesting. Maybe there's fewer leaks. Maybe it, I, if there's one thing that's changed between me being a full-time journalist and me doing uh, just YouTube directly, it's that I'm less aggressive about trying to hunt down very specific leaks. I still hear many many things that are coming down the pipeline and you you just kind of go through the same practice of making sure it's validated before you talk about it um and so I've, I've done some things like that but i'm less aggressive hunting down more specifically the launch time frame of specific games if that makes sense but you still hear a lot you got to remember i built up a lot of friends and, and connections in the industry over about a 15 year period and they don't just go away if anything i actually talk to them probably more because they use a lot of our products uh, at Stardock, and so it's just a, it's a fun little thing. So that's a great question. What are some of the best sources or tips for finding reliable and accurate information about micro, Microsoft products and services? Ooh, that is a that's a a good question because you got to get past the clickbait headlines, if you will. And so you, what honestly, it, it's terrible to say it this way, but some of the best sourcing is actually just looking at what Microsoft says. Now, I say that with a massive caveat because remember, Microsoft is always going to paint things in the best light possible. So Microsoft will make an announcement and then you need to understand what they're trying to convey, hide or reveal in said announcement. One of the best ways to do that is then to then go read other journalist reports about that piece of content. And I recommend a couple different sources, choose your own sources. I won't name any specific that I read, but then you have to try to balance it out. Like what, this is what Microsoft said and this is what the industry analysts are saying. Do they align? And that's kind of how you got to figure it out. Now, as for leaks and whatnot, that's tough because some it, it's not unforeseen that there will be a random Twitter account that finally has a scoop and they tweet it out. And it's hard to validate because it's like this is the only thing they've ever posted. And so you kind of just got to go with the, the gut check of like, does this make sense? Like if somebody shows off, uh, I don't know, a, a new Xbox that's the size of a hockey puck and it's in a new 8K 120 frames per second. Well... Sure, that's a great narrative that that's the Xbox Series, whatever, V next. But is it even possible to get that type of hardware inside of something so small? And would Microsoft actually do that? So one of the best places is just using your brain. So, uh, okay, on to the non-AI generated questions, which I still love. That was, that was great. Uh, Mr. PKI coming in with a couple different questions. I think the first and potentially the last one this week. Yep, yep, yep. He absolutely did. Mr. PKI says, do you think chat GPT will be available in office home subscription or will it be offered to enterprise customers with a special cow or skew they must buy? Ooh, this is a good one. So this is one of the things we don't know right now. So Microsoft has the Bing AI and they've announced all these different AI integrations across Teams, various Word, Excel, and everything else like that. I definitely think that there is going to be a skew somewhere along the way, probably more in the enterprise that enables these this functionality 
in some capacity. I don't think Microsoft is going to keep giving this stuff away because it's ex the, the queries that people are entering are expensive. The bigger question becomes is what happens, at least in my mind, what happens when this stuff comes directly to the desktop via Bing, which we expect uh, to happen with Windows 12. So there's a, you have ChatGPT on the desktop. How is, is that just going to be truly an ad-driven model? Or if you're paying for Office 365, home or personal or whichever SKU you're at, does it remove the ads? See, that would be interesting and that might be a, a way that Microsoft is going. Uh, but my personal feeling is that Microsoft 365 Copilot will become its own SKU. Microsoft will definitely have charge enterprise for this stuff. Uh, the question becomes, what's going to happen with the home user? I suspect that you'll be able to use it with ads and then potentially maybe remove them. The thing that just, the thing that toils in the back of my mind is that chat, running ChatGPT or Bing AI, whatever you want to call it, is not the same cost as running a traditional search engine. It is significantly more expensive. Now, we do expect time to low, over time, these things will become more efficient and cost less money over time, but we're not there yet today. So the question becomes, is Microsoft just gonna ride this out until they can hurt Google significantly and continue to take the loss on it until it's ready to be truly monetized? Or are they gonna try to generate revenue immediately from it? We'll find out that it's an, it's an unknown quantity at this point. Oh, ignore Max, I believe is how you pronounce the name. Hey, brah, hey, Bard, he wrote, oh, geez. <laughs> That's Google's thing. Uh, do you think Microsoft is seriously working on an Xbox handheld? No, I don't. I don't think it makes sense. I, I, people are, I get all these comments like, you're wrong, Microsoft should make a handheld. The Switch is amazing. I'm not, the Switch is amazing. But Logitech G Cloud, there you go. Go use that. Use the Steam Deck to go run it. Like, I just, I don't want to, I want to drill into this again. I just, I don't think it makes sense for Microsoft's model of trying to get Game Pass everywhere if they come out with their own hardware and then compete with their companies that they need to help sell this product. So, there you go. Uh, yeah, I just, I don't, don't think it makes sense. X Chaser says, hey, Brad Sams, any idea when Microsoft will fix the snipping tool to app to work in Windows 11? I wonder what's not working with it. They're actually about ready to make a big change to the keyboard that we haven't seen in a long time. I believe they're remapping the print screen button to actually launch the snipping tool. Uh, I don't see, I don't use the snipping tool. There's another application called, uh, X, uh, share X is what it, I use. I'm recording this on X split. But the application I use for screenshots is ShareX, which is a snipping tool, but on steroids. Because the way I have my computer map is I actually have the tilde key. So I smack the tilde key. I'll probably actually maybe remap it as print screen. Anyway, the tilde key, key, and then that gives me a crop tool. And then I can crop anything, like select anything in a square region. And then it will automatically save that image to the desktop. Once snipping tool does that, which they're almost there, you can actually use a snipping tool and a product called Stardock Fences to get them onto your desktop, which is another way that uh, I have used it as well. Create a folder portal to the screenshots thing and it puts it on your desktop. It works really well. But yeah, I don't, uh, without knowing what your specific issue is, I don't know exactly where they're going to fix it, but they are investing in it and they're making updates. So hopefully soon. Jay Wolf says, hey, Brad, happy Friday. Hope you hope you are doing well, Jay. I'm sure you're well aware of the Redfall announcement that took place on Wednesday. Absolutely. Which has caused a lot of controversy in quotes, as he says online. By now, it's obvious there is a huge issue over quality control and management at Xbox when it comes to a lot of their first party titles. I think that is a fair and valid feedback. Do you think it's time for a shakeup in upper management? at xbox Ooh, that well we've already so we've seen that we've already seen a shake up in halo the thing is shipping games is tough and shipping games on a timeline is even harder and I, this isn't the thing the only reason why i'm not like yeah just they should shake all of it up and and bring in new management and that will solve xbox's problems the reason why i hesitate to say that is this is not a unique problem to microsoft we've seen like i, I play call of duty warzone that game warzone 2 launched in a dumpster fire status it's still pretty rough and they're still trying to figure it out and get their user base back which has been shedding uh quite a bit so this isn't a unique problem with microsoft i think it's more of a unique problem where it used to be look triple a games back in the day two to three years and you can ship it now a triple a title is a five-year development cycle at minimum it seems and getting something less than that is tough without a significant amount of money and so microsoft is learning this very hard and so are many other companies in the industry and some of these ambitious games are almost untenable 
unless you're giving them more than five years of development time. And that's that's really hard for a company like Microsoft that says, look, we're going to give you X million dollars. You're not going to do anything for five years. And then we're hoping that in that fifth year, you're going to launch a great game and you're going to double your money. That's a bad investment for Microsoft. Like Microsoft can do better with that money, which is why these are challenging and why they they really got to get this thing moving in a systematic way where they have a major title. Microsoft's goal, I believe, if I remember correctly, is to have a major title launching each quarter of the year every year. That's the goal to make Game Pass viable. And they're trying to get there, but it's tough. And so I don't know if an upper management shakeup is warranted yet. But we'll wait and see what happens with Starfield and with uh, Forza. But everything is getting delayed. That is just, that's, that. I've said it before and I'll say it again. If a company announces a game is going to launch more than, uh, I, I usually say a year, but let's say eight months out, be skeptical that it will actually launch on that date because it's tough. It's, if it's in three, if it's in like that three months range, like if somebody in the announces of the game in June and they say it's going to ship in August or September, that seems pretty logical. But if they announce in June and say, look, it's going to launch December, start to get a little queasy if they're actually going to be able to hit that deadline. So, Steichen82 says, Brad, I got my question in a couple weeks late. Ah, I got my question in too late a couple weeks ago. My apologies. No apologies. No apologies here. This is a happy show. There have been a few reviews that hinted at longevity benefits of mounting video cards horizontally versus vertically. Interesting. And even some minor benchmark improvements. That being said, is there a preferred way to have the Xbox Series X sitting vertically or horizontally? Do either way affect the vapor chamber at all? Now, one thing, okay, there's a lot to digest here because mounting your video card in a PC is different than, say, your gaming console because some people, and it looks great where you can have your, your video card mounted vertically and it looks better, like it looks better in the case. Uh, typically, what all this stuff comes down to is actually the airflow itself. I believe Microsoft designed intentionally the Series X to be upright and horizontal. So I don't think there's any major benefit. If you're like truly worried about getting the maximum performance out of your console, the best thing you can do is invest in some money and get some Noctua or Be Quiet fans and really have your game around your gaming console a good airflow setup. That is traditionally what has restricted. Uh, console gaming, honestly, or, or the, the cooling is not the console itself, Xbox 360 aside, is the airflow around the box. Because you think about the traditional TV console, it's a closed box with doors and people will have the doors closed and there's just a little hole where the power cord comes through to pull in any sort of fresh air. So make sure you have a lot of cool airflow, get it flowing towards the console, towards the ingest, and make sure the exhaust is actually blowing away and being removed from the cabinet itself because it doesn't do a lot of good if that hot air is just circulating to the back of the cabinet and then being pulled right back into the bottom of the console. So... In your specific scenario, I wouldn't worry too much about which way, if it's vertical or horizontal, Microsoft accounted for that, but I would definitely make sure you have good quality, cool air flowing to your console. And Mr. PKI wrapping it up this week. For an ending Windows Insider question, when will we stop seeing Windows 11 updates when most of the Windows developers are working on Windows 10? That is a question I am not familiar with, why most of the Windows developers are working on Windows 10. Um, it seems a little uh, counterintuitive. Now, the one interesting thing that we still have on that Windows 10 side is what's going to happen in the end-of-life scenario. We're about two years away from Windows 10 being sunset, and that market share is still way too big compared to Windows 11. I suspect that Windows 10 might get extended, mostly because all of the people who are on the older hardware can't like this this box that i am recording with this podcast on cannot be upgraded to windows 11 it's a 6700k i believe and that's a great processor there's no issues this machine is fine but in two years am i going to scrap this whole box because it can't be up i don't know probably not maybe maybe i will i don't know but i'm not familiar with why most of the developers might be working on windows 10 mr pk if you have any more information i'd be love to learn more there you go my friends that wraps it up for the week hopefully you had a wonderful week hopefully you had a wonderful week as always make sure to keep it subscribed here because the only bs on this podcast is me <laughs>